Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a quartic equation with complex numbers. We have z to the fourth equals negative 81 and we're going to be solving for z values. And at the end, if I don't forget, we'll look at a plot or graph. Now, how do we solve these kinds of equations? First of all, think about a number whose fourth power can be negative 81. Well, I don't think there's a real number whose fourth power is less than zero, right? We know that z is not real. Great. It makes sense because this channel is all about complex numbers and a plus bi basically represents a complex number. So can I just go ahead and replace z with a plus bi, raise it to the fourth power, expand it, and then find the a and b values from here? Can I do that? Absolutely. That would probably be our first method. What you can do is you can use the binomial theorem, you know, a to the fourth plus 4a cubed times bi times 6a squared times bi quantity squared plus 4 times a times bi quantity cubed. And finally, the coefficients are 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. The last term is just going to be the fourth power of bi. And then if you kind of expand this a little bit, this is going to give you b squared i squared, b cubed i cubed, and b to the fourth i to the fourth. Remember, i to the fourth is 1, so you don't worry about that. i squared is negative 1. Don't worry about the i. And this is just negative i. So we get the following. a to the fourth plus 4a cubed bi minus 6a squared b squared minus, this is negative i, 4ab cubed i. And finally, plus b to the fourth. And we want this to equal negative 81. So what does that give us? Take a look. This is interesting a to the fourth plus b to the fourth. And then we have 4a cubed b minus 6a squared b squared minus 4ab cubed. And all of that is multiplied by i because that's going to be the imaginary part. And on the right hand side, the imaginary part is zero because negative 81 is real. So what do you do? You go ahead and set the real parts equal to real parts. So this is going to be negative 81. And this is just going to be zero. From there, you just get a system of equations. You can kind of replace B with KA. That should give you a homogeneous system, divide both equations, so on and so forth. But that's a very long story. I don't think you want to see the end of this, but you can definitely go ahead and solve the problem that way. It's such a long way to do it. And you're thinking there's probably an easier way to do this, right? But I just wanted to show you because sometimes you have to do it and you may not always have a shortcut. So now let's take a look. We have z to the fourth equals negative 81. How can I solve these kinds of equations? Easy. You just have to write everything in the polar form and then take the fourth root. Easy, right? So how do you write negative 81? If you think about argon plane and the negative 81, negative 81 is actually going to be on the real axis, but on the negative side, right? This is the imaginary axis. And that's going to be basically 81 units from zero right? It's absolute value or modulus. But if you think about the angle, that's just going to be pi radians. So in other words, I can kind of write this as 81 times e to the power i pi. Pi is the principal argument, right? In this case, happens to be that. But you can also add multiples of 2 pi to it and proceed with that. And that's actually needed in this case because this is only going to give you one solution. So instead of just pi, we may write pi plus 2 pi n, where n is an integer. All right, so now we have a nice equation. Let's go ahead and rewrite it. z to the fourth equals 81 times e to the power i times pi plus 2 pi n. When you take the fourth roots, you're going to get z, and this is a real number, and that's going to be a 3. And remember, the modulus or the absolute value cannot be negative. So don't worry about the taking all fourth roots because we're talking about the real roots here. Make sense? It always has to be a real number. So 3 times e to the power i. And you can kind of write this part as 2n plus 1 multiplied by pi, which is kind of like an odd multiple. And that'll be divided by 4. So it's going to look like this. You're going to have i times 2n plus 1 times pi over 4. So it's kind of like this. You can go ahead and replace n with 0, right? That's going to give you 
z equals 3 times e to the power i pi over 4. That's going to be 3 times cosine pi over 4, which is root 2 over 2, plus i times root 2 over 2. And you can kind of distribute that and get the final answer. If n is equal to 1, I'm just going to show you maybe a couple of these because I still have to talk about the fourth, I mean the third method. Maybe you can tell me about the fourth one. But if n is equal to 1, you're going to get a 3 here. Remember that. Z is going to be e to the power i times 3 pi over 4. I, I, can, I could also write 3 i pi over 4, but it's better to write it this way because you get to see the theta, which is going to be cosine and sine. And then this is going to be 3 times. Now, cosine of 3 pi over 4, if you think about it, it's pi minus pi over 4. So its cosine is going to be negative. Think about it. This is in second quadrant. But its sign is still going to be positive, so it's going to look like this, so on and so forth. There is four fourth roots, and obviously you can find the rest. I know you're going to hate me for this, but the left, I mean, the rest is left as an exercise for the audience. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at a third method, possibly. See if we can solve this problem a little differently. Okay, we talked about the uh, fourth roots, but let's go ahead and put everything on the same side and turn this into a polynomial equation. Is this equation factorable? Maybe. It kind of looks like sum of two squares, but I can kind of write it as follows. This is z squared squared, and this is nine squared. But I can also write it as follows. I can square nine i, and then put a minus sign, because when I square nine i, I get 81 i squared, which is negative 81, and negative negative is gonna make a positive. Isn't that cool? So now we get the following. z squared is either 9i or z squared is equal to negative 9i. From difference of two squares, think about it. You can factor it, a squared minus b squared, or put 9i I squared on the other side and square root, but you have to think about the two possible values. Make sense? So from here, you can do the following, square root and square root. But again, if you want to replace z with a plus bi, you can do so, but think about it. Which number squared is going to give us i? i on the argon plane is going to appear here with an argument of pi over 2. So its square root is going to have, basically this is kind of 9 units. Its square root is going to have half the angle and the square root of the argument. It's going to be 3 units from here. I know it's kind of like, it doesn't look very good. So let's back up a little bit, clean it up and make a nicer graph. So here we can kind of, let me magnify a little bit here. So if this is 9 units, this is like 9i, I'm going to have to be 3 units away from here and use half the argument. So it's going to be pi over 4, and this is going to be 3 units, okay? This is 3, and now I have to think about the legs of this right triangle, and they're going to be 3 over root 2 and 3 over root 2. Make sense? And of course, that's going to turn into 3 root 2 over 2, which comes from the other method as well. So it's going to be the same thing with the cosine pi over 4 and sine pi over 4. Makes sense? You can also turn this into uh, polar form and so on and so forth. Does that make sense? Okay. I'm just going to leave it at that because there's been three methods and it's been a lot of a long time. Anyways, this brings us to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.